hello everybody. You're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. Greetings I bring from Ja to all ragamuffin. In 1980, a fast-writing dancehall Kingston DJ who had been saddened and disillusioned by years of political violence around him became horrified at how bad everything had become in Jamaica. The chaos around this DJ caused him to snap and undergo a 180 degree shift in the direction of his musical career. From singing only about love or girls, he also became inspired to use his musical skills to do social commentary. Half Pint's enthusiastic and joyous voice and infectious charm made him one of the most lovable and admired reggae artists of the immediate post Bob Marley era. Throughout the 1980s, he didn't just make hits but unleashed anthem after anthem to a global army of fans that couldn't get enough of the little singer with the big voice from Chancery Lane in central Kingston. I'm not sure if it's his unrivaled storytelling ability that enables him bring subjects he sings about to life with vivid color or his sweet and catchy infectious hooks. But there's something about Half Pint's flow and music that ignites the fans' excitement in ways that are very unusual. Apart from his musical brilliance, Half Pint also proved to be very shrewd in protecting his intellectual property and is today among the richest Jamaican artists of his generation. And we'll take a look at this later in the video. But in the meantime, let's dive into the wonderful story of Half Pint. He was born Lyndon Andrew Roberts on the 11th of November in 1961, in the very heart of Kingston. He spent his formative years in Chancery Lane, a vibrant, pulsating section of town where the likes of Dennis Brown and Toots Hibbert also emerged from. As a kid, he was captivated by the music he heard playing from record stores, and whenever he got the chance, he would hang around the popular Randy's record store owned by Randy Chin of VP Records or Joe Gibbs' own record store. These stores always played the latest records in the market on their speakers all day and people outside the stores could hear the newest songs by the likes of the Paragons, Alton Ellis or the Wailers. His music teachers identified his talent and selected him for the school choir at the All Saints Primary School and steadily developed what would become his phenomenal voice. After finishing from high school in 1976, he started hustling to break into the music industry. He was then living with his family in the Waterhouse area and set his sights on a local sound system called Waterhouse Mellow Vibes. This sound system already had upcoming fire brands like Nicodemus and Pompidou, so getting a chance to hold a microphone would have been impossible. But as young London was well known as a kid with a good voice in the area, he was given a chance to freestyle and totally mashed up the place. And from that first night, he became a regular. When it was time to choose the stage name, he went for one that reflected his diminutive physique and Half Pint was born. Apart from his natural love for music, he also saw it as a way to escape the violent and chaotic political atmosphere in his country and to express his feelings. His exploits at Mellow Vibes became a platform to tour with various prominent sound systems like Black Scorpio, Gemini and Kilimanjaro. He paid his dues for years with these outfits and sharpened his craft until the opportunity to become a recording artist came knocking in 1983. That open door appeared in the form of fledgling producer Prince Jami. Jami's sound system was one of those that Half Pint had toured with and he had given a good account of himself, while Jami, who was a protege of the legendary King Toby, was just starting to carve out his own career as a solo producer and Half Pint was I believe the first major artist that he would record when they entered the studio in 1983. The product of that collaboration was Half Pint's debut single, Sally, a solid effort which was followed by a song that would become his first hit. This song had an amazing backstory. Half Pint was inspired by the neighborhood Rude Girls to write a song about a girl who used and changed men like socks. After singing it to his producer Errol Marshall, he loved it but he told Half Pint to name the subject of the song, Winsome. The song was eventually released and became a smash hit that went up to number one on the Jamaican charts. But one day, Half Pint was confronted by one of the rude girls in his neighborhood for singing about her. It turned out the girl's name was Winsome and Lord knows what she did to the producer, Errol Marshall, to make him want her name on the song. The song would later be covered by legendary rock group, The Rolling Stones, on their 1986 album, Dirty Work under the name Too Rude. Now a hot star in Jamaica, Half Pint released his first album in 1984 titled Money Skank Man, which was produced by Prince Jammy, a great album that contained the hit song Mr. Landlord. 
a tune that was actually inspired by true life experiences and was written about a man who owned the tenement yard that Half Pint lived at with his mother in Kingston. And that was the start of Half Pint's turn towards more socially themed songs and his conversion to the Rastafarian faith. He had first become acquainted with Rastafari as a young teen by mingling with the Rasta elders who would sit and reason with him and also gave him his first experience with the chalice. He released his next album, Fine Style, in 1984, which contained conscious tracks like Political Friction. By this time, his popularity had begun to spread internationally, especially to the UK, which became something of a second home to him. Now a bona fide red hot star, Sly and Robbie included him on the roster for the 1985 International Taxi Gang Tour, and he also recorded a couple of songs for the dynamic duo. After the tour, he started working with producer George Fang and began work on material that would make up his 1986 album, Greetings. This would turn out to be one of his bests, with the title song, Greetings, becoming his signature and definitely best love track. The song featured one of George Fang's best productions and flawless instrumentals by the great Sly and Robbie. The song started as a freestyle in the studio and became his biggest song till date. At every concert, he's performed the song and always gets the crowd roaring. It's definitely my favorite from Half Pint, probably followed by the song Freedom Fighter. After his next two albums, Victory and Level the Vibes, which were hit albums, he noticed that his bright, sunny and positive material was beginning to get overlooked by young listeners who were shifting towards more slack and violent dancehall content. He took a break from recording but made a huge comeback in 1992 with the smash hit Substitute Lover. And while many Jamaican artists had to keep treading water and making music non-stop to eat, Half Pint could afford to take breaks and still remain financially buoyant. He had pulled his feet off by very early in his career, registering with the Performing Rights Society, popularly known as the PRS, in the UK, during one of his trips to that country in the 80s. Reggae artists from Jamaica generally only got small advances for their music and almost always lost their royalties to shady producers who would feed fat up the music while the artists suffered. Half Pint was among the first and very few to beat that system. In a recent interview, Half Pint credited Lovers Rock legend and producer Sugar Minot as being the person who advised him to get PRS protection. In addition to album sales, he's also made big bucks of royalties from doing movie soundtracks from movies like The Mighty Queen, Substitute 2, and Mookie. After releasing the Level the Vibes album, he's released three albums with One Big Family in 1990, Legal with Legal in 1998, and No Stress Express in 2008. And while he's been light on the recorded material, he's been enormously heavy and busy on the live performing end, and has for years played countless shows in Europe, the Americas, and Asia, particularly Japan, where he's almost worshipped. Today at 62, Half Pint is still matching up stages both home and abroad, converting new generations of ragamuffin who are all captivated by his energy and talent. There are rumors of him working on a new album that may be released this year. Who knows what aces is hiding up his sleeves? I am personally expecting something hot because when it comes to Half Pint, big things are always like one. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, Jobless.